Hey, brothers and sisters, this is your favorite brother <laughs> from another mother here in the fabulous, awesome state of North Carolina. Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina in the morning, as the song says. God bless you guys. I pray that the Lord is blessing you this day. Uh, brothers and sisters, I just wanted to come on here and tell you something. And I made videos about this a long time back. Don't let anybody put a spirit of condemnation on you. Don't let anybody put a spirit of condemnation and fear on you, brothers and sisters. For the word of God, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, you know, written to the church. Back, let me back up a few verses. In John chapter 1, 1 John chapter 1, it says that if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins... He is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So brothers and sisters, don't let anybody put any condemnation upon you because the Bible also says that we have a righteousness that is by faith in Christ Jesus. Now brothers and sisters, I want to go on, as it says in Hebrews, to go on from those baby milk onto the sincere meat of the word from the milk about salvation and baptism, water baptism, and even baptism of the Holy Spirit. These are the basic things of the gospel, brothers and sisters. But, you know, every time, you know, the Lord wants to move us on, you know, I feel like traveling on not only to heaven, but while on this earth to go into real revival. And, and I've done videos on that. The definition of revival is a sovereign move of God in holiness. Signs and wonders following. The problem with the modern day revivals we've seen in the Western Hemisphere, Canada, Florida, uh, well, not so much in, in, in Brownsville, but more recent than that. Like t Todd Bentley and all that I'm referring to, not Brownsville. We see all this all about people being healed. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with people being healed. It's praise God. You know, but Jesus said something else, brothers and sisters, and I'm all for people being healed. I pray for people to be healed every day and seen thousands of people healed in my 15 years in the ministry. But you know what, brothers and sisters, Jesus said, if your right eye offends you, pluck it out. It's better to enter heaven with one eye than enter hell fire with two good eyes. Same thing about your hand. If your right hand offends you, cut it off. It's better to enter heaven with one good hand than enter hell fire with two good hands, brothers and sisters. So healing is very awesome and very important. The natural physical healing in our natural body that God would do supernaturally, brothers and sisters. And it is awesome as signs and wonders following us. Speaking in tongues and all those things are awesome. But brothers and sisters, the Bible says without holiness, no man will see God. But the problem with these Judaizers on the internet, brothers and sisters, and out there in this world, they're trying to give a righteousness by their own deeds. But the Bible says, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. So in other words, brothers and sisters, those who focus on the letter of the law, what they're doing is saying, here's a list of don'ts. Here's a list of don'ts and here's a list of do's that you can do in the flesh in order to get to heaven, in order to be raptured. Brothers and sisters, these things ought not be. For the Bible says the letter of the law gives death, but the spirit of law brings life in life eternal, brothers and sisters. It's by the spirit of the law. Uh, as God would give me the wisdom, let me break it down to you. And repeat it again, for he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Don't let anybody put a spirit of condemnation on you about what you've done in the past. For the Apostle Paul says, forgetting those things that are behind and pressing forward to the mark of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. Don't let anybody put a weight on you to easily beset you. Telling you about, uh, as Paul says in Romans chapter 14, about uh, different meats and what meats you can and cannot eat. In which feast days and Sabbath days. One man observes all days as a Sabbath. Another man observes no days as a Sabbath. Let, that, uh, let them all do it unto Christ and by faith. For whatever you do that is not by faith, it is a sin to you, the Bible says, brothers and sisters. So we have weak brothers and sisters among us. But they can't put their weakness on us, brothers and sisters, those of us who have our liberty by faith through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. By His blood, I've been reconciled to God. Hallelujah. By faith through the blood of Jesus, by, through the grace of God. Hallelujah. I've been redeemed 
by the blood of the Lamb. And no man, no man, no man, no man judges us, brothers and sisters, for we have liberty in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And as I said, brothers and sisters, it's by the Spirit. We don't follow Christ by the flesh. What does it say in Romans chapter 8, one of the greatest chapters in the Bible? What does it say? Those who walk according to the flesh is death. Those who walk according to the Spirit, there is now therefore no condemnation for those who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Read that text. He's talking about those trying to obey the law and those who are following Christ Jesus, brothers and sisters. It is in the Spirit. Let me break it down to you. Jesus made it very simple for anyone who has an ear to hear what the Spirit of the living God is saying to the church. He said, you've heard it's been said, referring to the Ten Commandments. Jesus took the Ten Commandments to a new level, from the natural to the spiritual. What did he say? You've heard it's been said, thou shalt not commit adultery. That's in the flesh. Having sexual relations with someone that is not your husband or wife. But I say unto you, Jesus said, that whoever lusts after a woman or a man in your heart has committed, you know, has committed adultery in your heart. Can you understand the difference? It's not a lower standard. It's a higher standard. God is concerned with the thoughts and intents of your heart, not what you do in the natural. Because, brothers and sisters, listen to me. What we do, this is where them old Judaizers and the devil's children try to cast stones at us. Listen to what the Lord is saying. It's the thoughts and intents of your heart. What you do in the natural is the fruit of of the thoughts and intents of your heart. That's why Jesus said you can judge a tree by the fruit it bears. Hallelujah. So when people say to you, hallelujah, that you need to do this and you need to do that, brothers and sisters, it's the thoughts and intents of your heart that the Lord is after. God wants us to have a personal, these are the same people that say, oh, we need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. That's right. Not a personal relationship with trying to obey the law and putting our, all these yokes, as, the, as Peter said, as James, the half-brother of Jesus, said in Acts chapter 15. We're trying to put yokes on people that we ourselves put yokes on the Gentiles that we Jewish people are unable to bear. No man is able to. That's why the Apostle Paul, in what they call the, the capital letters of Paul, which is Romans and 1 Corinthians, that's why Paul says that none are righteous, quoting from the Old Testament. No, not one. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He's saying that for the sake of those people trying to obey the law to the Jews. All have sinned, that every mouth will be stopped. And all will be silenced before the holiness of God. For we have all sinned and fallen short of His glory. The wages of sin, which we've all sinned, is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through what? Through keeping the law? By the deeds of the law? By the deeds of your flesh? No. By, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. That's why the Apostle Paul said in Galatians, brothers and sisters, after they had went there and they had been saved, those Gentiles, and then they had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. They were operating in the gifts of the Spirit. The gift of tongues for the church, not Praying in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 and Jude, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. For private interpretation, but the gift of tongues in the church that not everyone has. The gift of interpretation, prophecy, uh, gifts of healing, all of the words of wisdom, words of knowledge, all those things, the faith, supernatural faith, not regular faith, supernatural faith. All those nine gifts and all their subcategories listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. They were operating in all of those things, brothers and sisters. But what happened? Some Judaizers, just like on YouTube today, just like people who try to throw stones at this ministry and everywhere else on YouTube, they spied out the liberty that the Galatian church had in Christ. And they came there and had the people convinced they needed to be circumcised and obey the law in order to be saved. And that's why the Apostle Paul said to them in Galatians, how did you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? How did you get saved? Was it by keeping the law, by the deeds of the flesh? Touch not, handle not, by being physically circumcised, by giving your 10%, even with a bad attitude, by lusting after all the women you want, but just not having intercourse with them? Is that how you got saved? No, it's not. It's after the Spirit. The Spirit, and by grace through faith you were saved. Brothers and sisters, don't let anybody put a spirit of condemnation on you. For if you have sinned, you have an advocate with the Father, as John the Apostle tells us in 1 John chapter 1. And if you sin, and if you confess your sins, God is faithful and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. For He is just and faithful to cleanse us of all unrighteousness if we confess our sins. 
Now, if you've been divorced and remarried, if you've killed somebody, if you've been in prison, if you've been a homosexual, if you, you know, there's a brother that's got, there's a former homosexual that's got AIDS that watches my videos. If we confess it, if you confess your sins, the church, any of us, he is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness as if we never did it. So don't let anybody try to tell you that you're going to hell, this unforgivable sin that you were gay in the past, that you were divorced in the past, that you've killed somebody in the past, that you've been in jail, whatever type of things they try to heap on you. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 7, judge not, lest you be judged, because the same measure that you use to judge, it'll be measured back to you. And I speak right now as a prophet of the living God. May it be measured back on your head, every one of you, unless you repent of your judgmentalness and, and taking, trying to take some authority that God didn't give you in the body of Christ, trying to override the word of God and making the blood of Christ of none effect. May God bind your mouth in the name of Jesus. May God bind your computer in the name of Jesus. And let it be said, let it be gossiped that the living God is still on the throne and he is the only judge. Not you or anybody else, not me, but God alone is the judge over all man. And if we are confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God bless you all, brothers and sisters. May the grace of God be upon you. And may God forgive those people who try to put a new gospel on people. But you know what? I want to say this right now. Because I know those little demon-possessed Judaizers on the Internet, I know what they're going to say. Oh, just like, oh, trying to put a curse on somebody. The Apostle Paul in the Word of God put a curse on those who would do that. The Apostle Paul said if we are himself, the Apostles, or an angel from heaven give you another gospel than what you have received from us, let them be accursed. And I speak the Word of God and authority of the Word of God upon you in the name of Jesus. The different gospel that you're trying to give, may you be accursed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God.